So special greetings to all of you guys. And you know, I want to thank you personally, Russell and I, from the bottom of our hearts for all your love, your support, your comments, and for sharing the work that we do. We really love what we do and we love you guys. And just God bless you guys and thank you. We went through such spiritual attacks, but yet we are still here, still victorious through Christ. But tonight, Russell's going to talk about what's happening in the church. So I don't know about you guys, but there is an awakening, there's a shaking, there's a divide. The Holy Spirit is at work. So Russell, you know this stuff so well. You're going to talk about it. It's all backed up by scripture. And thank you for the suggestions. And we are going to pray at the end of this episode um, because the work we do really works with press. So the Lord is the center and the focus of everything. And I wanted to ask you guys, please remember to pray for us. We've got such an amazing ministry. What the Lord has done with us in such a short space of time is only his work. So handing over to you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. And greetings from me as well, brothers and sisters. I'm so excited. And uh, uh, I just, as my brother mentioned, what the Lord did for such a short period of time, I want to say to you, watch uh, what the Lord is about to do in your life very soon, if not already <laughs> busy doing it in your life. The Lord is calling all his children to stand up. He's got awesome things for us to do. This is the highest prophetic time ever. And uh, right now he's calling all his children to action. Yeah and to arms basically fully armed ready for battle spiritual battle yeah and i couldn't think of a higher title than to say i don't just i'm not just the son of the living god the king of king and the lord of lords but also an ambassador of christ that is such a high title so so many of you guys please stop waiting to be qualified the lord will qualify you just as you are he took me just as i am or as i was and still used me and the harvest is plenty and the workers are few. So just, if you guys are watching this, it's no mistake. You guys are Absolutely. here for a, 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 a spiritual purpose. Of course, every one of you. Every, every single one. one. Every yeah. single one. And uh, thanks for the suggestion of one brother. He, he asked that maybe we start with prayer, we close with prayer. And I'd like to say that we pray before every recording we do. But I think it will be a good thing to even start with a short prayer and we close with a short prayer. Um, and in that way, you can join us. And I trust God that actually, as you pray with us, basically the power of our prayer is multiplied and, and God gets the glory. So let's give a short prayer. Sure. Father, in the name of Jesus, we dedicate this video for the glory of um, our Lord Jesus Christ, let it serve your church, Lord, for the purpose that you've ordained. And may all the glory come to you. We plead the blood of Jesus over everything that is about to be revealed in this video. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, brothers and sisters, uh, we spoke so much about um, what's going on. And there is so much as still we still like to tell you about what is happening around the world and 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 really i thought maybe we should pause because it was so much about end times it was so much about um prophetic revelations that we I, i'd like to make a pause pause today and say how does that affect us believers and what is god busy doing in this highly prophetic time in the middle of the pandemic in the middle of the um uh, uh, the most fierce spiritual battle since the <laughs> the <laughs> history of the world probably to be second uh, one after what is going to happen in the tribulation and uh, indeed let this video is going to be about what god is busy doing with his bride so the title heading is the bride of christ in the valley of decision and I've outlined here um, basically um, 10 things that I believe the Lord is busy doing in the body of Christ, the church. Now, you may come with an extra one or two or three. The Lord may bring you other things that, Lord, that, that uh, um, He's busy doing in His church. You're welcome to share those with us. Okay. Um, so as my brother mentioned, there is a shaking in the body of Christ. 
and 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 uh, we are called in in times such as this and there is no more demilitarized zone it has never been a demilitarized zone as you become a believer it's the lord's side and the rest is the devil's side whether people know it in the world or not <laughs> that makes no difference and for long long time the church of christ has been asleep thinking that we are in some kind of demilitarized zone where you can just simply rest <laughs> there is no such a thing the rest is in heaven when we are raptured and we are home your warfare begins the day you get baptized Absolutely. and you give your life to christ let me tell you something the devil's not after the lukewarm church he's already got them he's after you and me the the true bride so when things are going wrong know that you are doing something right so what happens in the spiritual world it affects here what happens here affects the spiritual world you just say you were going to mm. look up with your fancy cup fancy colors I said, each time he speaks i'm going to get a sip of coffee because i didn't have time to finish <laughs> <laughs> all right okay so we'll continue brothers and sisters so what is the lord busy doing in his church the bride of christ okay number one and by the way um if you email us we'll send you the transcript it's, it's just three pages by, by the way um and you're welcome to have it if you'd like to have it in your hands if you don't remember everything we're saying in this video so number one the lord is busy purifying his bride and you will see the scripture on the screen it's from 1 peter 4 verse 17 for the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who refuse to obey the gospel of God? And we know that the judgment upon the world will be the tribulation. But before the tribulation comes, God starts actually dealing with his own bride, his own children. And that is recorded in 1 Peter 4 verse 17. So the pandemic and all that comes with it is a testimony to our complacency in the body of Christ. We've been asleep for a long time. We, we as if you remember our video about the seven churches of Revelations and the last church is the Laodicean church, which is the prophecy for the end time church that the majority of the church will be a sleeping lukewarm church and that is the laodicean type so now the laodicean type of church is lukewarm because the main sins in in the lukewarm church are ignorance indifference and unbelief that is how you identify a lukewarm believer and because of our complacency and by the way you can add pride to that um, the underlying root cause of all those three is pride that actually caused the enemy to take so much ground that suddenly we have a pandemic we call it pandemic they call it pan pandemic <laughs> and suddenly the body of christ is not at ease some side with the new world order propaganda machine some christians are saying no this is not of god so god is using this time to purify his bride number two the lord is busy separating the foolish from the wise virgins and on the screen you will see the scripture in matthew chapter 25 the parable of the ten virgins at that time the kingdom from heaven will be comparable to ten bridesmaids who took their oil lamps and went out to meet the groom now five of them were foolish and five were wise because they were because when the foolish ones took their lamps they didn't take any oil with them if you're familiar with the parable you understand that the 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 code word for virgins or bridesmaids is believers remember unbelievers can have no lamp for oil only believers have now the oil always symbolizes the holy spirit so the foolish one had no oil 
Both of them, according to the narrative of the parable, fell asleep because it took long for the bridegroom to arrive. And at midnight, the bell rang and the doors were opened for the bridesmaids or the virgins to enter. And the bridegroom has arrived and only those who had oil in their lamps could enter. So those who did not have oil were called foolish. Now, what is the oil representing? The oil represents always the Holy Spirit. So those that walk with the Spirit are the wise virgins. Those will enter and that's a prophecy for the rapture of the church. When the door opens, that would be the rapture. The, those that are ready, that are wise, that have a walk in the Spirit relationship with Jesus, they will enter um, the the courts of the Lord, that will be the rapture, but the other ones would have to go through the tribulation. Um, when affliction come, afflictions rather, believers are confronted with a choice to draw near to God or to draw near to the world. This marks the division in the body of Christ between the lukewarm and foolish believers and the wise and loving believers. Remember, Matthew 25 has three parables, and all three parables, parables are to do with the end times, because in chapter 24 is the discourse, the Oliver discourse about the signs at the end. And immediately, Jesus then gives the three parables, and all of them are dealing with his church at the end except the last parable which is after his returns the goats and the sheep so god is busy separating the foolish from the wise virgins by bringing a challenge or afflictions and those who are wise can move forward those who are foolish moves backward number three the lord is cleansing his bride from false believers the scripture on the screen you see 1 john 2 verse 19 they left us but they were not part of us for if they had been part of us they would have stayed with us their living made it clear that none of them was really part of us the sleeping church allow the liberal left and their ideology to creep in the church and the so-called sin of tolerance came in oh let's be nice to the people outside oh let's embrace the things that they teach us so what happened the world came into the church um, and these very leftist ideologies are the doctrines of demons that crept into the church and many of their proponents are part of the church body of Christ, yet they never have been born again believers from the start. And yet they preach about their false doctrines and many other things that are widely accepted in the body of Christ. Can I just also sure. add that these churches are hurting people badly Absolutely. so people are leaving these churches and what's happening now you'll see besides the revival that's happening also home fellowship groups are beginning home bible study groups are beginning they're popping up everywhere that's what we're about exactly. and that's what's happening so don't be surprised if you've been to church and you've been hurt by the church don't be surprised because people are leaving christianity it's because of that absolutely so god is using now these prophetic times um, that is causing those that are truly not born again believers that are were never part tr truly of the bride of Christ to simply fall behind because they no longer want to actually do the church thing or anything spiritual they want to follow where it is easy for them number four the Lord is bringing judgment on false prosperity gospel preachers Okay, that is a big one. And on the screen you can see Galatians 1 verse 8 to 9. But though we or an angel from heaven 
preach any other gospel unto you than the, that which we have preached unto you, let them be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preaches any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. Now Paul, the Apostle Paul spoke those words to the Galatian church who moved away from court doctrine of the faith and they went backwards into the laws of Moses. And he told them plainly, you started with the true gospel and now you're moving into another gospel. If anyone preaches any other gospel than the one I taught you, let that people, person be accursed. That how serious it is. If you have received a false uh, gospel, gospel of prosperity, that is selective gospel, it just has dealings with the flesh, but nothing with holiness, nothing with repentance, nothing about sin, then you have been deceived. And God's curse is on you by simply by following that false gospel. So my suggestion, repent, move away from the false gospel. God will forgive you, will cleanse you and will bless you with the gospel of truth. The happy days of prosperity gospel preachers are about gone. While the world is reeling under the economic breakdown due to the so-called pandemic, the livelihood of many or households has been destroyed. The name it, claim it, frame it preachers are digging with their heels for cover. They cannot sustain their lifestyle because simply people are broke. They cannot support them. Number five. The Lord is causing his bride to once again become dependent on him rather than the world. And the scripture you can see on the screen is Hebrews 13 verse 5. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For God has said, and this is the verse, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay, uh, only when all support structures in one's life are removed, then their faith taking God at his word is shown. And we reach the point now where all our foundations other than the truth of Christ have crumbled down. If you trust it in your career, in your profession, in your connections, in your money, in your business, in anything, at the moment, those are busy perishing. And the only one foundation that will stand is that which is unmovable. What it is? It's all temporary. Correct. The only one that cannot be moved is the rock of salvation, Christ the Lord. So God is using this time now to once again bring us back to reliance on him rather than all the other things that we added. Remember the scripture, Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. We've turned it the other way around. We say, seek all these other things and God's righteousness will come to you. Doesn't work, brothers and sisters. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work. Okay. Now, number six, the Lord is restoring the simplicity of the faith amongst his children. And the scripture is James 1 verse 27. A religion that is pure and stainless according to God the Father is this, to take care of the orphans and widows who are suffering and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The challenges the Bride of Christ faces forces believers to go back to the basics of the faith exhibited in love, in compassion and purity of heart. Brothers and sisters, there are so many needs at the moment as we speak. Lives are broken down. 
businesses are broken down and truly now the heart of Jesus is shown with those who are his children. They start sharing. It's once again like in the times of the book of Acts. From house to house, fellowship, fellowship, helping one another. And these are the beautiful things of the faith that we have forgotten. We run into the worldly things for so long, but now God is bringing us back to the simplicity of You know, faith. I know we're going a little bit over time. There's people stuck. They went on cruise ships mm -hmm. and they got stuck from COVID. They've, they've been there for six months um, on these cruise ships. People are committing suicide. In some countries, there's more people that died from suicide than from COVID. So guys, it's a horrible time for, for a lot of people, but our prayers are the biggest investment we can make right now because hearts need to be in the right place and softened. Can you imagine for people that we know we've got our Lord who strengthens us. Can you imagine people that don't know the Lord? The kind of fears they're experiencing with this pandemic, the propaganda machine of the media every day, COVID-19 pandemic, so many people will die. What do you think that is doing for them? And you know what the real sickness is? Uh, people look at me strange because, you know, I don't always wear my mask properly. Here's the problem. I feel that people are making each other sick through fear just by looking Absolutely. at it. So there's no more... It's, for me, it's not even like a, a pandemic people are worried about. It's, it's fear. It's exactly. all fear. I truly believe that many people die in the hospitals more from fear of COVID-19 rather than <laughs> any medical condition of sickness. Mm. And that is how serious it is. And by the way, demons can work through fear. Uh, for those that are familiar with the spirit world. Number seven. The Lord is forcing believers to start simplifying their lifestyle and differentiate between needs and wants. And the scripture is in Philippians 4 verse 11 and 12, I read with you on the screen. I am not saying this because I am in any need, for I have learned to be content with whatever situation I am in. I know how to be humble and I know how to prosper. In each and every situation, I have learned the secret of being full and of going hungry, of having too much and of having too little. The Apostle Paul speaking to the Philippian church. Are you content with what you have? Are you grateful for what you have? Before your next upgrade on your car, on your house, on your job, have you considered your neighbor? Have you considered your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that are struggling? These are the things that the Lord will call you to account. If you don't sense that difference now, you're in a danger ground. So the Lord is using this time to simplify our lifestyle. Forget about your high standard of living and it's only about yourself. Look and help the others in need because we don't have much time left. What you gonna do with these fancy cars of yours or fancy house if the tribulation is about to happen so soon that actually you won't be able to enjoy those in any case. Yeah. Just <laughs> another reminder, Noah built the ark before the rain. There was no rain exactly. and he built the ark and that's just like now. These times are coming, we need to preach hard against it. Indeed, brother. Number eight. The Lord is restoring the home-based fellowships. As in the beginning of the church age, after the day of Pentecost. My brother just mentioned it now. That is what the Lord is busy. And the scripture is Acts chapter 2, verse 46 to 47 I read and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all people all the people and the Lord added to their church daily such as should be saved you see now the simplicity of faith, 
house to house home based churches. And I'll share with you, I shared it many times with my friends that I was a uh, I was young in the faith for about two years, um, some time ago, and uh, I was reading the book of Acts. And always when I come to this passage, I get so excited. From house to house, that's how the Pentecost church began. And there was no big buildings and you didn't go for services. You were going with your Christian friends for a true fellowship. And the Lord spoke to me. And you know what the Lord says? He says, my son. My church began in homes, in houses, and my end time church before my son returns once again will be in homes and houses. How wonderful it is. We see right now in this pandemic, now the governments of the world now want to tell us you cannot get more than 50 in the church or you cannot go above certain numbers, you have to wear masks, you have to do this, you have to do that, or you cannot go to church. But now, God's true church can start once again fellowship from home to home. How wonderful it is. Yeah, I'm going to say this. This home-based ministry, our Christian Connect Lounge, I love because we have breakthroughs. We don't break the bank to go to church. Absolutely. Or break the bank being in the church. Yes. I mean, I went to churches now. I speak about this. I know coaching. I understand what it closes. So I understand what messaging is. And that's what the churches became, a, a feel-good, happy place. And I'm so glad those churches are done away with. Most of the people that have joined us are not churchy people. They are the church. Absolutely. Back to the definition, what is the church? The body of believers. Mm. It has never been a building. And, uh, and again, there are some operating still from those buildings that are wonderful people. Yes. That they go, we've got absolutely nothing against them. But what we're saying here is that the model that is being going on for a couple of hundred years of denominational churches and usually in buildings is falling apart simply because the laws of the countries have changed they're very hostile towards preachers and in order for them to survive in the current environment they would have they are forced to dilute the message not to preach to preach only selectively otherwise they can take their license away mm. John MacArthur, exactly. he got a call from Trump and Trump was saying, apparently, like, yes. congratulations, yes. you're fighting the forces of evil by resisting. Well, he stood for the truth and he spoke to, uh, to them honestly and I give God the praise for that. Amen. Absolutely. Um, and that is a major shift in the Bride of Christ from gathering at buildings for services to gathering in homes for true fellowship. Number nine. The Lord is busy destroying the denominational divisions amongst his children. And the scripture is Matthew 16 verse 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Did you um, notice that Jesus used singular, not plural? When he spoke about the church he says i will build my church so god sees his church as one even that we are believers from all around the world at small fellowships in spirit we are always one but denominationalism divided us based on doctrines so there is a shift here from doctrinal righteousness which different denominations adopted to what is the true one? Christ righteousness. Amen. Mm. And amongst fellow believers in small fellowships, homes to houses to houses, the true righteousness is God's righteousness in us, which is Christ righteousness. We can never rely on doctrinal righteousness to make us right. Um, right. Um, let's see anything else there is one more but i'd like to say that um many denominations are also facing lawsuits which it, which makes it difficult for them to operate lawsuits from the worldly bodies the lgbt community and such as those similar ones and they're making demands so they make it very difficult for pastors to actually preach in the conventional model 
Number 10 and the last one. The bride of Christ is preparing for God. The Lord is preparing the bride of Christ for departure. Where the body of Christ is united in hope, seeing the signs of the times prophetically unfolding. In other words, the Lord is building up the excitement in us and the conviction that our days on earth are numbered. Hallelujah! How wonderful that is! And that the scripture is Matthew 24 verse 33, in the same way when you see all these signs or all these things, you will know that the Son of Man is near right at the door and we see all these signs. So body of Christ, brothers and sisters, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in a one moment suddenly will be transformed and will be before the throne of God in heaven changed forever, joyfully singing uh, a new song that only the Lord knows which that is and how wonderful that would be, eh? In a single moment, our days are numbered. Um, really, it's so exciting. Um, I cannot tell you, I'm so excited. Yes, Lord, come, take Amen. us home. Absolutely. And uh, I'd like to end by... Um, asking you the following question are you prepared for our soon departure here i will list some helpful hints number one keep your belts fastened and your lamps burning you know what the belt means and what your lamps means right and that is a scripture in luke 12 verse 35 Remember the belt of truth and the lamps, um, uh, which is the light of God in you. The next one, number two, take one day at a time faithfully. Every day God ordained for you and me and everyone things to do. And right now these are prophetic times. Don't try and plan too far ahead. Take each day off. On its own because the days are evil the scripture is Matthew 6 verse 34 number three keep doing what the Lord assigned you to do faithfully it is unique what God assigned for you no one else can do it God said today I assigned you to do this and the scripture is Matthew 25 verse 14 just like he assigned the different talents to everyone he assigned a portion of a talent for you to do something and only you can do it do it faithfully number four simplify your lifestyle so you can focus more on the lord's work at hand if your basic needs are provided for you don't need that higher paid job rather increase your output of what you can do in the body of christ um Simplify your lifestyle so you can do more the things of the Lord and especially what He leads you to do. Number five, increase your prayer time and start petitioning with vigor for sinners and loved ones that are not saved. Be a prayer warrior and pray for sinners including your family members that are not saved. Spend more time in prayer. Very critical. Number Six, make sure use every opportunity to share the gospel and warn carnal believers to make their lives right with God. Be bold and tell them, listen, God has no time for church games. God has no time for games of religion. One of these days you find yourself on the back foot, left behind, and you regret every missed opportunity. Be bold and warn lukewarm believers they may be angry with you god will be happy will not be angry with you because otherwise you will give an account to god for not warning uh, boldly those who choose to live sinfully even while confessing god's name number seven have you sorted out your will did you write love letters to your loved ones in case you are ruptured soon. That is an area that is overlooked completely. 
What's going to happen to all your possessions? What's going to happen with your will? Of course, if you're raptured, there'll be a long <laughs> lawsuit, legalistic. legalistic thing with insurance for not paying out this and this and, and that. By the way, I've asked this question to insurance companies. They laugh at me. I said, listen, we Christians know that there's a rapture. If we were to be raptured, what about the payout? Of course there's no payout. Of course they laugh because they're not going to pay. There's no payout and because everything will be in your name, it will go to the bank. Hmm. And maybe they're thinking now, we must be smart and, and, and take uh, uh, underwriting on all the Christians because we anyway not going to pay them out. So. <laughs> Ask us about our booklet. We have a booklet. You've yes. written this with a yes. few other guys. I'm trying to make an audio copy as well as a visual copy but we've got a booklet copy it is a conversation starter it is a plant seeding machine and by the way let's attach the copy of the booklet in I'll written leave a format we'll leave a link for the booklet and those that want the transcript of this just email us we'll send it to you but the booklet copy is there for you but this is very important make your will yes it will be maybe lawsuit not to pay out for example about your house who to inherit it and what happens if it's not paid fully and so forth but what about the rest of your possessions um you can actually assign it to someone you may you may be wondering what what happens the the, the people that assign it to they might be raptured too <laughs> so ask the holy spirit to show you it may be a family member that is not safe, but the Lord will save them during the tribulation. Ask the Lord to give you those hints and write your will. Because let me tell you, once the rapture takes, takes place and the new world order aggressively actually comes aggressively in. comes in against all believers, they'll need every help they can get. How about the love letters? Do you know what to write? How to say goodbye to loved ones that no matter, no matter how many times you told them about Jesus, they, don't, they didn't actually do anything about it. You're not sure what to do? Download the booklet, print a copy, leave it with them. Everything is there. Not only what will happen in the tribulation, how to protect themselves, but also how to receive Jesus. If there is one thing you can leave uh, for them, that is something that points them to Jesus. That will be helpful, but you can write one on your own if you decide to do so. Number eight, and the last one, have you spoken to your loved ones about the rapture possibility and what to expect to happen afterwards? Yes, you can leave something in writing. How about just talking to them about it? Yes, they don't want to hear about Jesus and death, but they will gladly hear if you go through what is expected to happen in the tribulation. That is simply human nature, curiosity. You start speaking to them about the Antichrist, Mark of the Beast, all unbelievers that I spoke to them about that, they're fascinated to hear it. Tell them the story. And there's Brief proof. There's proof in the Bible, guys. There's proof. If you know the scriptures, I use the scriptures as proof and evidence. Exactly. Tell them about it. They mm. may mock you. They may laugh about it. But the seed is planted. But the seed is planted. When it happens exactly as you spoke, what do you think that will happen. That becomes a seed. The Lord will come to you in the tribulation and will say, listen, when your mother or father or loved one spoke to you about these things, you mocked, you scoffed, you refused to listen. Would you refuse to listen to me now? Or would you repent and come to me and join them in heaven when the tribulation is over. Yeah, the biggest revival on the planet will Absolutely. happen after that. You see, and I truly believe that many of our loved ones that are hard-headed and they don't want to hear, God will visit them during the tribulation. So if you despair, oh, you know, I've prayed for so long, they don't listen. Focus on what the Lord has signed for you, but pray for your family. I believe God is faithful and He'll visit every family member of yours that is not safe during the tribulation. And the situation will be drastically different. Let me tell you, there'll be an absolutely mighty revival. But if you pray now, those prayers are investment and they'll become a seed and God will be faithful to answer your prayer and to visit your loved ones during the tribulation. And God willing, they will be saved. Mm. 
Brothers and sisters, that is for me and Dan for today. Dan is going to close with a short prayer. And uh, uh, we bless you and we love you. We'd like to say that uh, we'll follow up in probably one or two weeks with a, another prophetic update. This time will be about events worldwide. There is so much going on, brothers and sisters. I can't wait, but um, uh, I think it will be in a week or two weeks time that we'll release the next one. Then you want to say something? Yeah, just a quick thing, guys. Remember, we have our website. We have our needs. So go through to that website. Pretty much everything we speak about is backed up by scripture. It is also um, on our website. You can download our stuff. It's all free. It's available. You can go back, subscribe to our YouTube channel, download our videos. God bless you guys. And I'm going to close right off back, in prayer. Please. All right. So, on. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for all that you've done. Lord, I want to ask that you will take this message and may you help the people listening to it and may they share it with those who need to hear it as well lord may you bless them may you help them and may you keep us close in the name of jesus lord keep us protected and help us to revive lord and help us to have courage strength and help us lord to speak like we've never spoken before to warn like we've never warned before and to love like we've never loved before lord may you be the center of everything i pray this in the name of jesus thank you Heavenly Father, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Bless you. Ciao. We love you, brothers and sisters.